Hello and welcome to the Beginner PHP course. Uh, the, the goal for this series is to get you acquainted with PHP so that you can start using PHP in web development. So the first thing we should ask is what is PHP? Well, PHP is a programming language and it's interesting that a lot of people when they ask well what programming languages do you know a lot of them will include HTML and CSS. But HTML and CSS are not programming languages. In fact, they're just markup languages. Uh, HTML is, allows you to style text, basically. Uh, it has a few other features, and, and um, this course assumes that you have a little bit of knowledge of HTML and CSS. If you don't, it's not that big of a deal, um, but you should learn it if you're going to do web development. But it's not a programming language. Uh, programming uh, is, is basically the ability to have your uh, script or your computer uh, um, do things for you and make decisions. Um, you can program it to uh, say if this is true, if a condition is met, then do this. Uh, if not, if that's not correct, what you're going to do is something else. Uh, you, you have all sorts of things like that you can do with programming. Um, PHP is one of many uh, programming languages that allow us to make dynamic websites. Um, I believe it's probably the easiest one to uh, get started with um, simply because getting a server up and running on your local machine is very simple with PHP. Um, and I think it's just there's so much information out there about PHP. It's so widely used and it's so common that I think it's a good place to begin. Um, there are others like Ruby um, and Python that you can use for web development and you can even use just JavaScript uh, now with web development and although JavaScript is 100% necessary to learn for um, web development these days I still think you need to learn PHP. Now PHP um, actually runs on the server so what generally happens with a website is you have a text file that is served by a server to your browser and your browser interprets the the markup language that you've put in there so it's text but it interprets like an HTML tag so like say an h1 as a heading tag and so it will create big bold text if you put it inside of an h1 so its job is to render uh, the markup in your browser window on your computer okay but the entire code is fed to your computer PHP is a little bit different what happens with PHP is before uh, any HTML is served uh, to your browser uh, PHP the server like there's software that's run called Apache or Nginx and it will actually run the PHP code first and then when it's done running all the PHP code in a file it will serve that file afterwards to your browser. What that allows you to do is create dynamic websites. And if none of this makes sense to you, don't worry, it will. Um, the other thing that you should know about PHP is that it's an, it's an interpreted language. And what I mean by that is computers, whether it be a server or the computer that you're watching this video on, uh, even a phone, they only understand machine code. Basically, computers run by a bunch of on and off switches called transistors. And a transistor, if it is on, is represented by a one. If it is off, it is represented by a zero. So machine code is all ones and zeros. You've probably seen the matrix uh, scroll, uh, you know, little videos where there's a bunch of zeros and ones scrolling down the screen or whatever. It's not quite how it works, but basically that is machine code. And that's very hard for, for a human to understand. So um, the nice people at these programming languages like PHP, what they've done is given us a human readable uh, code that we can write and um, they will uh, they will basically translate that into uh, machine code so that your the server or whatever is using it can understand it. So there are two types of programming languages really there are compiled languages like C um, that basically you type all the code and then it gets compiled and the compiler is responsible for putting all that 
into machine code and then it is um, run after it's compiled. So the compiling takes a little bit of a time, but every subsequent time that you run it after it's already compiled, it runs very, very fast because it doesn't have to uh, be translated anymore. It's already in machine code. An interpreted language like PHP has an interpreter that is built. Um, PHP, I believe, is built on C. And so what happens is, is every time the script is run, the PHP script is run, it has to interpret that and, and on the fly, it has to translate that into machine code. So um, you don't have to compile it and the source code uh, remains uh, human readable. The downside is too, there is a little bit of a, a speed loss because it has to be interpreted when it's run. Now PHP is very, very fast and you're not gonna notice that speed, but it does add up and so that's why um, C programs run a lot faster than PHP programs. Okay, now that we've gotten through all that, um, like I said, um, this I'm going to assume that you know a little bit of HTML and CSS. If you don't, again, don't worry about it. It's still okay to start this series. Um, if you know PHP already, this isn't going to be very helpful to you. Um, but what I want to do is give you some prerequisites. I don't even know how to say that word. So if this is your first time on my channel, thank you. Uh, you'll notice very quickly that I suck at talking. Um, but a lot of people will benefit from my teaching. So if you hang with me, even though I may have a weird accent or um, I may say things all weird, I'm kind of tongue-tied as well, but I will teach you web development in a very good way. And you can check out some comments on other videos uh, and see what other people are saying about my series. But anyway, um, there's two things that you're going to need for this series. Well, three, really. You're going to need a browser, but I'm assuming you already have a browser that you're watching YouTube on. Um, so what we're going to be using is Chrome. Uh, you're welcome to use Firefox if Chrome's not available in your country. Um, but I, I suggest either Firefox or Chrome. I do not suggest Internet Explorer or Edge. So if you uh, can download Chrome or Firefox, they're both free. Um, and they will give us some tools that we can use for, for building stuff. The other thing that we're going to need is we're going to actually, since I told you that PHP is actually run on a server, you what we'll need to develop on is a server that runs on our computer. Um, we need, um, basically, what we're going to be using is Examp, and I think they actually pronounce it Champ, which was surprising to me if you watch this introduction. I've always called it Examp or Lamp or Wamp. Uh, but XAMPP works for Windows, uh, Linux, or Mac, um, and so you will need to install this, and I do recommend that we install version, right now, we are at version 7.2, and that is what I recommend that you install and follow along with. However, if you are using Mac, you can go to apachefriends.org, do not install this uh, egg, XAMPP-VM. It's a little bit more complex and it's really powerful, but we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using the same as everyone else for Windows and Linux. Um, and so you actually have to click here if, if you're on uh, Mac. If not, you can click these. Or if you're watching this in the future and it's a different uh, version of PHP, they have a newer one out by then, go ahead and click here to go to other versions or find it wherever it is on the site at the time. And what we're going to do is download, if you look up here, they put Windows here. So download the version of Windows, the 7.2, that's available for you. Or if you're on Linux, you can do it here. I'm on Mac, so actually, pay attention, we don't want the dash VM, so this uh, PHP 7.2.12 is what we need. So go ahead and download that. Once it downloads, go ahead and install that. I'm not gonna install it here on screen. For one, I already have it installed, and two, installing software at this point is probably something you've done a lot. So go ahead and just install it, follow the instructions, you don't have to do any crazy configuration or anything. The next thing we need is a text editor that we can write the code in, and I recommend Atom. So if you go to atom.io, so atom.io, this is a great uh, and wonderful text editor, okay? So go ahead and click download there and install it. Once you have those things running, you're ready to go with, uh, with this uh, series. And so with that, guys, go ahead and get this stuff uh, installed, and I'm going to see you in the next video, and we're going to write our first PHP script.